All right, who loves amides? I love amides, so I'm gonna show you how we make amides by combining carboxylic acids and amines in the same beaker at the same time. I'm gonna catalyze it with hydrogen, H plus. I guess I should have called that like uh, hydronium or something. Anyways, what's gonna happen is that the carbonyl group is going to get activated after the H plus attaches to it. We're gonna end up with this carbonyl oxygen having a hydrogen hanging off of it, and it's got a formal charge of plus one as a result. Again, that activates the carbonyl group and makes it very susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Now, ends love attacking things nucleophilically, as long as it has a lone pair of electrons here. So blam, it will attack the carbon. What we end up with is an OH group where the carbonyl group used to be. Ah, I almost forgot. The pi electrons from the bond become lone pairs on that oxygen. That's why we're down to a single bond here. We still have the OH group that was left over from the carboxylic acid and we're connected to the N. The N had two H's on it, and this ethyl group, it now has four bonds, one, two, three, four. So it has the formal charge of plus one. We're going to get a proton transfer. One of these hydrogens is going to be lost by the nitrogen and attach itself to this oxygen. How that happens it could be solvent assisted. Some teachers will just say it happens, which kind of implies that it just attacks like this, like from oxygen directly to nitrogen. Let it be known it's probably solvent assisted, especially if you're doing this in water. Bam, bam, bam. We end up with the same molecule basically, except this is now OH2. That oxygen is the formal charge of plus one and we're down to NH here. See how we've transferred a proton from one to the other? Beautiful. Now, that makes this a superb leaving group, and the carbonyl, the oxygen that was originally the carbonyl group, will regurgitate that lone pair back into a pi bond as long as the water leaves. And it's a great leaving group, so why wouldn't it? So, we're back to a double bonded oxygen, but it still has that H attached to it. So it's got still got that formal charge of plus one. The only thing that's still attached to the carbonyl carbon is this N. And the N has a hydrogen and it has an ethyl group hanging out of it. Uh, that ethyl group isn't hanging out of the hydrogen. I just got lazy and put the two together like that. It's hanging out of the nitrogen. We've lost a water in the process, so I'll make it explicit there. Now the only other thing we have to do is lose this H probably to the solvent and actually we just lost a water. So let's just say that that same water molecule steals that H away. Those electrons go to the oxygen and what we end up with is a regular old carbonyl group, a nitrogen with a hydrogen and an ethyl group attached. We needed to have at least one hydrogen on the original amine so that we could do this proton transfer thing. You can't do this amide reaction with a tertiary amine, i.e. a nitrogen with three carbon groups hanging out of it. But for a primary amine like this one and a secondary amine as well, although that'll be less nucleophilic, you can get these amide reactions happening. And that's how you make an amide. Uh, insert Kanye West lyric here, best of luck.